Hello there, this is going to be a general love reading for all signs. <sighs> the energy is magnetic. There's a feeling in the air of magic. And I am filming this on Friday. What is the date today? December 30th. So it's the day before New Year's Eve channeled for years he comes at the midnight hour speaking of which we should probably use my midnight hour oracle deck and this is my oracle deck that i created finally um pre-orders are available on my website saltwaterheelstarot.com or you may click that upside down triangle below and it brings up all my links on youtube so whether you want to purchase well pre-order these decks if you want to follow me on Patreon, which on Patreon is where I do all of the erotic tarot readings, but readings like this, special love oracle readings, when I do extendeds for them, patrons on Patreon can watch them unlimited. All you do is you pay that $20 a month and you have unlimited access to these extendeds now going forward. You also have access to all of the special love oracle, excuse me, all of the erotic tarot readings on Patreon. There's a shitload of readings there. There's just other regular readings and um, it's a lot. And it's just 20 bucks a month as opposed to renting it for $9.99 on my site. So he comes at the midnight hour. You have the candle, hope, guidance and clarity. There's a glimmer of hope. The energy lately has been the impossible is starting to become possible. When pigs fly, one in a million, one in a billion kind of a vibe. Something that you thought was dead in the water is showing signs of life. I'm seeing in my head the, the plant, the Rose of Jericho. And if you're not familiar with the Rose of Jericho, it's that plant where all you have to do is add water to it and it resurrects itself. It's the resurrection plant. And I'm seeing that in my head with this energy of hope. Remember for a really long time, for years, I have channeled that in a past life, some of you um, lit a candle because you were waiting for someone to come back. This is, you were the counterpart. And back in those days, the candle was quite symbolic. You know, it was about lighting the candle and putting it in the windowsill and sort of giving that symbol and letting someone know, hey, it was safe to come or, or I'm home or, or, you know, the light being left on waiting for someone. And, you know, a few years ago, we had that epiphany that we had to blow out that light, that candle, because you know, that was that past life and we're in a new life now. And what we needed to do in this life was light the candle in this life and say, hey, here I am, I'm here. And there is this sense of lighting the candle, which could be symbolic or literal, right, depending, to say, I'm ready when you are, to say, Here I am. This is where I am. The chandelier. Non-stop getting the chandelier. I chose this picture for this deck specifically because that chandelier had this grand, luxurious vibe to me. And so in this particular card, the chandelier, it symbolizes luxury, glamour, and wealth. So there's a sense here of somebody's opening themselves up to that vibration, that frequency of wealth, luxury. You know, the wealthy man energy has been haunting us for years. And so some of you, your counterparts are a wealthy person. They live a life of luxury and wealth, right? Maybe even glamour, we don't know, right? But it's this sense of the finer things in life and of being comfortable. So this person, you or them, or the two of you are going to be a power couple. Both people that are very successful to people that are going to be building an empire. But there's a sense of grand, luxury, wealth, right? Peace of mind. Um, and it's very past life as well, too. So there could have been a lot of affluence from a past life. 
there's an unrequited vibe I'm getting here as well too. So in a past life, things may not have worked out the way you had wanted it to in a particular past life. It's unfinished business. The crow. You've heard me channel for years, the crows announce it. So in this particular deck, I just love the picture itself. I chose it because I thought it was so witchy. I thought it was just so mysterious, right? And you have this gorgeous feminine who's bending over backwards. And um, this crow is there and she's just sort of like very eloquently bending and, 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 you know, moving to this energy and she's very different. She goes against the grain. So she stands out in a crowd because she's doing her own thing. She's different. She may speak differently. She may look differently. She has this vibration and frequency of very different, almost slightly creepy, mysterious, very witchy. But the crow symbolizes omen, magic, and an announcement. So I don't know why for years they've channeled the crows announce it, the crows announce it. There's this announcement and I feel like the announcement is saying, burr, 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 get ready, the impossible becomes possible. In vain, pride, ego, and arrogance. Somebody here, their life lesson may have been to not let, it could have been a really big lesson recently, to not let the glitz and the glamour affect who they really were, right? So someone here might be super humble, no matter how successful, maybe even famous, no matter how rich they are, they are humble. There's a humbleness here because their pride is their demise, right? Ego, pride, arrogance is something, they, they had to have death of the ego. And they may have had that happen to them before, you know, it, it, several years ago, maybe just last week, I don't know. But that it's, it's essential for death of ego. Because otherwise it wouldn't be the right vibration. The breakthrough, you have hope twice. So you have hope twice and clarity twice. Because my breakthrough card, as you can see it, there's a break. Light is coming through, right? The crack is how the light gets in. And so the breakthrough card says hope, discovery, and clarity. So there's a discovery of something. Oh, look at that. Infinity. Union, abundance, and eternity. So union. There's a connection here that could be a re-connection here in the making. Because it has a very old past life vibe. Infinity means it never ends. It's infinite. There's a sense here of it's unfinished business because... It never ended. It was, it was an open-ended lifetime where maybe someone died. And the, they didn't and they didn't get word of it. So they just waited. And then they didn't know what happened. Or it could have been one of those lifetimes where, especially, you know, like in Bridgerton and, and Jane Austen kind of time periods, right? They talk about the fact that you had to marry within your class. You had to marry someone that was compatible, so to speak, right? And and nowadays, it's really not a thing. Uh, although, yeah, some people still feel the pressure of that. And that's it as well, too. Feeling the pressure to do what family or friends or society tells you to do. And not necessarily doing what you want to do. It's breaking the mold. Four of Cups. There's a sense of sitting, like, like, like uh, what do they call that? Stale. It's a stalemate. There's nothing happening. See how they're just sitting there? And Spirit is literally handing them on a silver platter this gorgeous chalice, this chalice of love, right? It's the Holy Grail, and this person's just sitting there. And now what they have to do is they have to have the strength to be able to grab the chalice. And I think by them grabbing the chalice, it goes against status quo of what they've been taught to believe and, 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 and everything that they, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cause a ruckus or disruption if they grab this chalice. It's going to be like, it's like, what the fuck? Maybe because someone's already in a relationship, right? Or because they're, they're very different people. Or maybe it's because these two people are not supposed to be together. Age difference. Maybe different races. Maybe different, you know, just upbringing. Or it's just because this person feels like I have to do what I'm doing. It reminds me of the show Fleabag I finally recently watched and I bawled my eyes out in it. And it's kind of a lot of the things we've been channeling for the past few years of that feeling of wanting and desiring but can't do it, can't have it because we're already committed elsewhere. 
And, you know, in Fleabag, it's about a priest who's already made his vow and commitment to God. And then he meets someone and falls in love with her. And he t literally tells her, like, I cannot be with you. I can't have sex with you because if I do, I'll fall in love. And if I fall in love with you, my life will be fucked. And this is, I cannot be with you. I can't do this. I can't, I can't. There's going to be this moment that's going to be a make or break. This is the moment of uh, the, the test of all tests. Because if the holy grail of something, career or love was presented to you, and it's everything you have, have wished for, everything you deserve, and if you don't take advantage of that, it's not self-love. Self-love says, I deserve this. I don't want to live a life of, of, of mundane, of beige, of boring, of ordinary. And I, I want to live a magical life. I want passion. I want spark. I want to do what makes my soul sing. I want, I want to be passionate in all areas of my life. And by, by not accepting this gift from the universe, this holy grail, if you will, it is you or them putting themselves out of alignment and their vibration drops. And therefore, they never actually really hit that pinnacle. They'll always come super close to something, but they'll never get it because they're misaligned, right? This is why some people will always get so close, but 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 won't pull through. They won't get the job. They won't do the, they just, it. Just, it's close, but no cigar. And it's because there's something there, something that keeps them misaligned. And most times it's us doing it to our fucking self. It's self-sabotage. Self-sabotage in this case is by not allowing yourself, this or you or this person, to receive what is yours and what has your name on it. You see what I'm saying? And then we roll into the four of wands, which is, so two fours. This is the energy of union new beginnings, stability. There's gonna be a feeling of being able to lean into this person, trust this person. And what's very interesting about this is it feels like it's an instant connection. So this would be feeling like I can trust a stranger, feeling like I just feel like I, I it's a familiarity, a recognition of sorts, with a stranger, but it's not a stranger. It's someone you may have just reacquainted yourself with in this life, but it's very past life. There's a Knight of Cups, secret admirer. So they may watch, they may peek on, they may keep tabs, but there's no actual offer. See, this is the offer. Ace of Pentacles is a solid offer now it doesn't have to be a solid offer of hey you want to get married it could be a solid offer of <clears throat> connection of hi how are you hi nice to meet you hey what are you hey what are you doing on new year's eve is is that feeling of like it could be connection it's it's a it's a solid offer of well, we're not even going to talk about it because it's not it's not offered yet. Yet. Knight of Wands. Oh boy. Oh boy. So the Knight of Wands can be a younger fire sign, but it also is a very impulsive, sudden thing that someone does and it could be a message because you have the page of pentacles which could be a message so there's this sudden impulsive feeling desire or actual thing where they message there's messaging here there's there's a there's an offer because page of pentacles can be an offer they're messengers so it's some type some type of message it's an offer and it's very sudden and it's very impulsive and unexpected Because intuitively, they feel it's the right thing to do. Like, it's just what they feel. Someone here is confused. Seven of Cups, they're confused. They're not sure which, which way is up or down. They're not sure what they're feeling. They don't know what to do. It stirred up something inside of them. 
that they'll they'll forever be changed by this offer this opportunity this encounter they're forever changed by it right it has it has ruffled feathers within them it has awakened them there's some sort of of um activation three of swords the crack is how the light gets in this could be third party. See how this masculine, I don't know if you can see it because of lighting with the ring light. He is in despair. And he's like, oh fuck. Because it's oh fuck because you're feeling something. And whether this is a job opportunity or love, it's like, what do I do? I don't think this person, you or them, has ever been faced with this type of a, of a decision because it's never really necessarily been the holy grail of things, right? The holy grail of love, of career, or anything of that sort. It's never really been that. So when it presents itself, it's just like, whoa. What do I do? How do I react? What do I say? They, it's, 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 it's uncharted territory. They've been cracked open. It's like Humpty Dumpty. Once he's been cracked open, it's over. It's, you can't put it back. But it's not supposed to be put back the way it was. It's supposed to be rearranged, right? So a masculine here is feeling some kind of a heart cracking. His heart's cracking open. There's an activation. He's confused. He doesn't know what to do. He can't sleep justice this is libra this is also possible balance and 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 karma and things of that sort but it can also be legal things so divorce child support alimony but it's the feeling of doing what's right this person here always does the right thing remember we talked about that i'm going to do what they, they expect me to do that society tells me to do what my family tells me to do what what's what i think they, that they think is right but is it what they think is right or is it what's right justice what is right for you what's right for you fuck what everybody else says they don't have to sleep at night in your shoes in your pillow in your skin this is not their life this is not their karma Queen of Cups, a feminine who is opening herself up raw, being vulnerable, right? This is open, sensitive, intuitive, receptive. The feminine is receptive to this, but the fucker needs to step up. He needs to grab that chalice and he needs to run with it. So you can see that if you go from this to holding it in their hand and not being sure what to do with it. And from there, they're really going to have to trust their fucking spidey senses and figure shit out and, and guidance. Wealthy man. I mean, a nonstop wealth just keeps coming up because it's the energy of higher, higher ascended, right? Good quality, right? Money is energy. So it's not to say money is good or bad. It's intention behind money. But this person has wealth because it's just what it is. Queen of Wands, this is a spicy bitch. This is the divine feminine in her raw power, as I always tell you guys. She's like lava. And the only thing that can stop lava is water. And the Queen of Wands is someone who is fierce and passionate and charismatic and creative. And she's very witchy. You can see she has a black cat right there. So she's very witchy. There's a magical, mysterious sense to her. Almost a sense of like, you're not sure if you want to get close or not. But now you're like, it's like you're under a spell. And she didn't put you under a spell. Motherfucker, she is the spell. And now they're under some sort of, uh, it's, it's like a hypnotizing thing. Can't take my eyes off of it. I, I don't know. It's like... It's like they caught a glimpse of something, right? And then like, maybe they caught a glimpse of the life of their dreams that could be. And then because it seems impossible or it seems like it goes against everything that you think is right, they, they close their eyes to it. They pull away from it. They try and run from it. And you can't fucking keep running. Time's up, right? Three, two, one, midnight hour. Clock strikes 12. Page of swords, spying, keeping tabs. This is the card of someone who could be learning something. They want, they might be trying to learn about you and, and, and learn about what certain things and feeling stuff out. And it's this whole new world. And, and the Page of Swords is, it really more so feels like because you have the Knight of Cups, it's keeping tabs, 
checking up, spying even, because they cannot not, right? Look at the bottom of the deck is the lovers, physical connection, absolute fucking physical chemistry, but it's more than that. It's like a soul recognition and it's magnetic. Remember in the beginning of this, as soon as I started channeling, I felt magnetic, electric sort of an energy. And that's this, it's magnetic. They feel magnetically pulled to this job, this calling, this life, this person, it's magnetic. And the universe is saying, time's up, motherfucker. What are you gonna do? The main female, this feels like, I mean, you can see the look on her face. She doesn't look happy, she doesn't look pleasant. This could be someone's current partner someone who is not very conducive to their to their growth because this person themselves doesn't feel like they're passionate and charismatic and creative they kind of just feel like they're just like doing the bare minimal and looking at you like what do you mean you want to do this what the fuck like they want to clip your wings this could be a masculine so even though it's a female imagine that could be a, a a masculine male partner looking at you like that and and you know when we all started to awaken and crack open that's how our partners looked at us like we we're fucking nuts like like we were crazy the message i told you it's a fucking message something about reaching out the wealthy fucking man, bitch, here we go. It's like I'm fucking psychic or something. I'm telling you, it's the wealthy man. The wealthy man might reach out a message because he cannot not. It's, it's too, once it gets exposed, once you meet, once they see this thing, like let's say for example, this is work. They're not gonna be able to stop thinking about this. I wanna do this. What do you mean you wanna do that? You're a doctor. What do you mean you don't wanna be a doctor anymore? What do you mean blah, 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 blah? What do you mean you don't wanna do this? I, I, this is my calling. So it's, whether it's love or it's business and career, you guys know I have many business clients that they don't ask me about love, it's business. Whatever it ends up being, they're saying, I want this. And a, a man like that, a masculine like that, always gets what he wants. He's, cause he's the alchemist, he's the magician. He creates, he manifests. He's the boss, he's a leader, right? He's the alpha, the aggressor, he's a go-getter. You're not gonna tell him no. But at the same time, let's say this is a couple, right? Look at the body language, just she's making like a face like, ugh. And he's kind of cool, calm and collected, you know, and in his power and in his shit, he's shining. You, someone's, whether it's male, female, or, or male, male, female, female, doesn't matter, it's the energy. Someone's partner might not want to see their other person, the other person shine. Again, it's the clipping of the wings. Like wanting them to be successful and whatever, but then when they hit that pinnacle, it's kind of like, ugh, what is this? You know, that kind of a vibe? It's, it's, they want to keep you cat. Playfulness to recapture romance, allow your inner youthful spirit of fun to shine, being more playful. Getting out of your fucking head. Sometimes I think we overthink things. And I, I, I try to not let people make me feel like I can't be myself. And so sometimes I could be really cold and quiet and mute, but my, but the other part of me is just very open and very vulnerable and, and, and just is going to give you a fucking synopsis in five seconds, or I'll say nothing for five years. <laughs> you know what I mean? It just depends on how I feel in the connection. And there's a sense of just feeling it and being lighthearted and not overthinking what you're doing. And, and, and if it feels right to say hi, say fucking hi. You have calling in your soulmate. Your prayers, affirmations, and visualizations help bring you together. You're calling it in via vibration, frequency, but also someone may have made a wish. They may have manifested. Yes, law of attraction. You have attraction here. So attraction here says you attract romantic love by enjoying this moment fully. For those of you that do not know that, you know, law of attraction basically saved my life in 2016, 2015, around there. And I mean, I've watched almost every single Abraham and, you know, Esther Hicks videos on YouTube is how I learned 
um, read some things, watched a bunch of stuff, but you know, really the premise of everything I've learned about law of attraction is through Abraham Hicks and Esther Hicks. And so there's all these free videos on YouTube that I personally have watched, you know, before I started my channel, before I started my awakening process and all this, but law of attraction is that you have to feel this energy of which you are trying to manifest. So if you want to manifest love, bitch, you got to love the fuck out of yourself and your own life. If you don't love your goddamn self, you're going to attract someone that don't love you too. All right, let's roll into your extended. Again, click that upside down triangle below. First link will be to pre-order my two newest Oracle decks that I created myself, Midnight Hour and C'est La Vie. Um, you also have my link there to um, be a patron on Patreon where you can watch this extended for free. It's just the $20 a month that you pay. Otherwise, you can rent it from my website, saltwaterheelstarot.com. The link is also below for $9.99, and I think it's good for three days, 72 hours or something they'll let you. But on Patreon, it's unlimited. It never expires. So I will go ahead and leave you here. Reminders, I have not sent out all bracelet orders or magic moon waters and, or, or candles. I have been working nonstop to get those things out to people in divine timing. And if you don't believe and trust in divine timing, I am not the person for you to interact with, buy from, or anything of the sort. Um, all of those that have paid for readings, you know I'm no longer accepting any more new ones. So that way I can catch up with those that have previously paid. If you have not heard from me yet, it's not because I didn't, I forgot about you. I have, I took on too much. Oh my God, I took on too much personal reading requests. And I have been trying to get out of the weeds, as they say, for quite some time. And so this is why I'm taking a break next month. I'm not going to accept any more readings because I have to catch up. So thank you for being patient with me and giving me grace and allowing me to catch up. But also at the same time, you know, I believe in divine timing always. Even when things are delayed and there's accidents, it's not really what it is. It's just not time. So I will see you guys in the extended. Thank you for all of your likes, your shares, and your subscriptions here on YouTube. And thank you for all of your donations you sent to my PayPal. I love you. Bye.